artificial intelligence and open marketing platforms will drive more change in the next five years than we've seen in the last two decades. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Mark Simpson, CEO at Acoustic. Welcome, Mark. Hi, thank you, Tanya. So what is the story behind Acoustic? Um, so Acoustic is a carve out from IBM Watson Marketing um, in that we have um, taken the future looking marketing products um, from the IBM marketing portfolio. Um, and um, we are taking them forward with the people who supported those products um, into a new standalone business, a standalone business backed by private equity firm Centerbridge, um, but a business that is solely focused now on the marketer. Um, we believe there's a significant gap in the marketplace in, uh, um, in a company that is focused on the marketing professional alone. Um, and uh, that is has a sole purpose of improving the lives of marketers, unleashing their brilliance, um, as we're calling it. But so Acoustic is a new company, but you're launching with a a big head start head in headcount clients and and geographic presence. So talk about that. Yes, yeah, so we are a global company. Um, we um, operate globally through U.S., um, Asia Pacific, Europe. Um, you have clients all, all around the world. Um, we have just over 1,100 people um, in the business, so it's a large startup. Um, and we have about 3,500 clients that we support on, on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're at a, a nice point in terms of um, you know, we have a good size to scale, uh, particularly, you know, for enterprises and on a global basis, but we are now nimble enough to um, adjust to market needs as, as they come up. The market is changing massively at the moment. I think we're in a pivot point um, in marketing where I believe the next five years is going to change more than the last 25 years. Um, and I think there are technologies like AI that's really pushing that change forward. Um, and we are in a great point now with our size and, and where we are as a business to be able to respond to that change. So you mentioned the AI and artificial intelligence. So what, what tools in the marketing toolbox are about to be disrupted by artificial intelligence? Um, it's hard to see areas which won't have some form of artificial intelligence helping them. I think, um, you know, the purpose um, for us is to not use AI as a buzzword, but really apply it into the workflow of marketers. We kind of geek out on it a little bit in, in what we do. And um, rather than try and uh, you know, throw out AI as, as a buzzword, is actually see how we apply it to improve the lives of marketers in some way. So um, you know, that could be in just saving a lot of time by, I don't know, using AI to auto tag images or videos or whatever that might be on a really simple basis. But it could also be more proactive in pushing marketers to um, see where there are anomalies in their data, where they might want to dig into customer experiences a bit more and fix any problems or, or highlight anything that's working really well or working really poorly or, or, or be even more proactive in sitting alongside a marketer and in, in trying to make them smarter and making their decisions smarter, giving them advice when they are trying to put campaigns live as to whether they'll work or, or, whether, or whether they may, may need adjustment out of the gate. So, you know, lots of different applications we apply AI in about 20 different areas now in our portfolio um, already um, and are recruiting a lot of data scientists and designers to, uh, to increase that significantly over the coming years. What competitive advantage does IBM's Watson offer that your competitors can't match? Um, well, we, we, while well, we have completely separated from IBM as, 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 a, as a business, we are our own standalone company. We still do partner with, with Watson. Um, and we've been using Watson for years. And, and really the competitive advantage we've had with that is Watson's had billions and billions of investment over a very, very long period of time. It's one of the first and deepest and richest um, sort of AI capabilities out there. Um, and while in IBM, we've had a very good early advantage in being able to partner with Watson internally and uh, apply Watson's AI capabilities into our marketing portfolio to benefit the marketer. Um, now that we are breaking out and now that we are a standalone company, we still use Watson's APIs and that, that, will, that will continue um, for the foreseeable future. 
Um, we also have our own AI capabilities that we've developed over the years um, internally within IBM and, and now externally as Acoustic. Um, and we will also look to partner with other AI as well where, where relevant. There are a few sort of more niche AI uh, capabilities that are really applicable in, in marketing, I believe. And uh, um, we want to, you know, have a look at those in a bit more depth and see uh, and see what, what we can do to, to benefit the marketer. So um, it's an area we're going to double down on. It's an area we're investing a lot in our own data scientists, but we're not going to have, we're not going to name our AI as a separate sort of uh, thing. We're not going to uh, think of some genius to, uh, to, to donate the name to our AI. It's just going to be, really embedded in the platform itself into the, into the market's workflow. ZDNet's Stephanie Condon recently wrote that you will be expanding your open market ecosystem. Describe that. Yeah, so um, for um, about three, four years now, we have been building out um, what is now called Acoustic Exchange. And um, that is really designed to um, connect the marketer's landscape together. So we know that a marketer will use dozens or more vendors um, to achieve all the different types of marketing that that they want to do. Um, And we know that we can't answer every single question. We can't ask everybody to use Acoustics Marketing Platform for every part of marketing that, that they want. So really for us, the answer is to be an open ecosystem. We don't want to be a walled garden. Um, we want to make sure that um, we are ingesting data from any system that our clients use. So, that, and that spans to competitors as well as uh, to complementary vendors as well. Um, so that um, uh, so that marketers can join their data together. The real purpose of that, though, is we want to allow marketers to give a consistent and personalised experience. And it's that consistency that's really missing if you don't have an open ecosystem or don't have some system that is joining uh, your customer data together because you need that consistency across, you know, ad tech, martech, um, social media, you know, all, all the different elements that, 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 get, that get touched on. And, and that's what we're really enabling with Acoustic Exchange. In an era of phishing emails, spoofed websites, robot telemarketing, and spam SMS messages, what should CMOs consider when prospecting for new clients? How can they work around the very valid suspicion that individuals have developed regarding unsolicited contact? Yeah, I, and I mean, look, there's um, there's a range of different things that I, I, I think there. I think that CMOs um, need to be providing that um, uh, personalized experience that resonates with customers. So it doesn't just look like sort of a spam or, or what have you. That, that, that's, that's obviously key. And that's been spoken about for 15 or, or, or more years um, in how to deliver a, a personalized experience. But um, the reason we named ourselves Acoustic was we want our customers to resonate. We want that intimate experience between our, our clients and their customers. And we want to, them to be heard. We want them to resonate with, uh, uh, with, their, with their end customer. So that is really what, what we're about. I think, Tonya, as well, when you layer on complexities on top of that in regulation around data, um, which we're really at a very early point of with GDPR and, and regulation in California and um, you know, some murmurings in Australia and, and the like as well. But if every country takes a different approach to regulation or every state takes a different approach to the regulation, we're really in a very complex world. So we're actually going to invest a lot in being able to manage customer data for our clients. Um, you know, at the moment, in all the marketing clouds, it's really a, a reaction. It's a bolt-on afterthought. But if you think about how complex this world can get, we are investing $20 million now in re-architecting our platforms, but that customer data management at the core of it, because we feel in a few years' time that it can only be a lot more complex than it's going to be now. Mark Simpson, CEO at Acoustic. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more of your advice on how to handle this in the future. How can they do that? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a range of different ways. We, um, we have uh, a website, acoustic.co, um, or um, I can be reached um, particularly on social media, on Twitter, um, on LinkedIn. Um, we have at goacoustic. Um, as a as a handle for for anyone who wants to reach out with with myself or or the business, I'm happy to hear from uh, anyone uh, that's listening today. Thanks you again so much, Mark, and good luck with your new adventure. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.